So hello and welcome to one of the first Houdini tutorials. And for this tutorial, I've prepared something special that is quite difficult to do in other tools, but in Houdini is really straightforward. And what we try to do today is this dent here, a dented look, um, which has become quite popular over the last months, over the last year. For example, it's been done in uh, this intro animation here. So really quite nice, and I want to show you a really straightforward and um, easy way in Houdini to do that. And in order to accomplish that in Houdini, we are going to use volumes and Boolean operations on volumes. So let's see what we're going to do. What we want to achieve in the end, and I've called this process Boolean denting because I want to do those dents and um, we're going to do some Boolean operations to accomplish those. So what I want to have in the end is something like this, where just one object, um, looks like it's been pressed into another object. And the way we're going to do that is um, like this. We start with both objects, which um, are just intersecting each other. And then we expand one object, the first, the intersecting object. And then we expand the second object. So we have just those two basic objects that have both just been grown um, to this darker red and this uh, turquoise color. So we have something like this. And the next thing we're going to do um, is we intersect both of those grown objects and keep the intersection area. So we end up with something like this. This is the newly formed intersection area. And again, the way we did it is just take the two basic objects, grow both, expand both, and then intersect those. So from this area that we just generated, we'll subtract the original object and merge it with the, uh, with the um, bigger object that is intersecting. So we end up with something like this. And the final step we have to do is just basically blur out those corners, round in those corners, soften those corners, and uh, we're done and have a geometry which in theory, whoop, which in theory should look like that, like the light blue area here. So let's dive into Houdini and build this. First thing I want to do is create a geometry, dive into the geometry, um, delete that and just going to use two spheres for that example. So let's create a sphere. Let's set its type to polygon. So we just get a regular polygon mesh and increase its subdivision. I'll copy that. Um, and first thing I want to do is just yeah, this is the this this should be a smaller sphere um, intersecting into that sphere, and um, I just want to ghost that sphere so I can see it while working on that. And I'm just gonna make it a bit smaller and uh, move it up. Yeah, something like that. So in order to do all those Boolean operations, all those merging and intersecting that I've shown you in Illustrator, it is um, necessary to convert the geometry into voxels into a volume. And the way you can think about voxels or a volume is basically they are what a Photoshop file is in contrast to an Illustrator file. So what we have now um, would be an Illustrator file. So just loads of vectors, um, loads of polygons, loads of um, basically lines, loads of basically tiny lines that form up uh, a geometry. And a volume in contrast is formed out of tiny little voxels. And the way you can think about it is just like they're tiny little cubes that are um, kind of 3D pixels. So um, and those really make it easier to do operations like Boolean intersection, Boolean union, um, or example, smoothing out stuff. So let's convert um, our geometry into uh, volumes. And we do that by um, VDB from polygons. And a VDB is um, a volume database. And VDB is just a special way to represent a volume. It's really fast. Um, it offers loads, loads of features. Um, and if you can, you should try to stick to VDBs for volumes in Houdini. So wire this up, highlight that and we see already those tiny little cuboids. Those are too coarse for me. So I'll go into that note and change the voxel size down to something smaller. That's better. Okie doke. Copy that note paste it, 
and wire up the second sphere as well. So I now have the big sphere and the small sphere, both as volumes. Cool. So the next thing I'd like to do, I'm just going to go back to the drawing again, is expand both the smaller sphere and in this case, the bigger sphere. So the way I'm going to do that in Houdini is with a note called the VDB reshape. VDB reshape SDF. And um, an SDF is just a representation of a surface. Um, Manuel is going to go into detail about that if you want to know more. But for the moment, for the time being, um, just this is keep in mind SDF is um, a surface of a volume. So wire that up and voila. So this is the previous geometry and this is after the reshape. So what the reshape does, it's dilating it and dilating a volume means expanding it. So as you can see here, this is the original volume and this is after reshape, it grows a bit and I want to make that a bit more extreme. Let's maybe grow it by, no, that's too extreme. Grow it by four and the off offset here is specified in volume. So let's, we just enlarge this thing by four voxels. Let's do the same thing for the big sphere as well. Again, this is before, this is after. So now we have both geometries expanded. And the next thing we want to do is intersect both of these objects. So that they only keep this intersection area. And that also is pretty straightforward in Houdini. The way we do it is by a node called VDB combine. And we wire up those two inputs, highlight it. And within the node, um, you can select which operation it should perform. So basically what we want to do is an intersection, an SDF intersection, because again, SDF is like the surface, like the outer surface that we want to work with. So let's choose SDF intersection. And we see we have an intersection area of this and this. So that's the intersection area. So next thing we want to do is subtract the um, original small sphere from that intersection area we just created. So we end up with something like this. So let's just do that again with a node called VDB combine. And we want to do an operation which takes that and subtracts the small sphere. So that minus the small sphere. So let's wire up that on the first port minus the volume of the small sphere and set it to difference. Difference just as port one minus port two. So what we did now is, let's disable the ghosting here. What we have now is exactly that shell. Okay, put it here. So now what we, we want to bring back is um, the outer part of the big sphere. So basically that. Um, but I want to like subtract the outer part of that. So let's do a VDB combine again. And I will take the big sphere and subtract this outer shell from it. Again, highlight it, dive in here and say SDF difference um, and have like the outer shell subtract, uh, subtracted. Oh, and of course, I don't want to have that on the um, enlarged sphere, but on the original small sphere. So let's do it like that. Exactly. And I have now those two. Now I'm going to merge them and do that by VDB combine again. Wire up both of those geos into that node and do an SDF union. So I end up with that. So this is already quite nice. Now the only thing I want to do is kind of soften that edges so they become more organically looking more, more soft. And this is done by a VDB smooth SDF node. I just wire it up here. And now I'm and what that actually does is um, it works like a blur in Photoshop. So it blurs voxels and softens, softens boundaries. So exactly what we want. So now that we have this geo, we can convert it back to polygons in order to, for example, render it or do other geometry operations, geometry fun with it. I'm going to do that by VDB convert. Wire it up, 
highlight it and convert it to polygons. So now I have back my polygon object. So let's see. Let's merge that again with the original sphere. Do a merge node here. Our indented geometry and the original sphere and highlight that. And we now have a sphere that dents into another sphere. And the beauty of this operation is that it's fully procedural. So what I can do now is, um, the, most, the easiest thing that I can do is, for example, move that sphere a bit and the other geometry will automatically react to it. So um, this is already animation ready. Or I could change that geometry going in there. So for example, um, exchange it with a platonic. To make that easier, I'll just exchange that with a null so I don't have to constantly rewire. So exactly like that. And gonna put that into here. Um, make it a bit smaller and move it upward. So now I have a platonic object pushing into that sphere. Also what I could do is go back to the sphere again. I could, for example, um, build something like a cloner. Come here. Like scatter points on the other sphere. Not so many, maybe only 20. And copy that sphere onto those points. I have to reset the translation. Exactly. And wire that into my null. So now I should end up with yeah, a sphere with really lots of dents. So quite a versatile setup, really straightforward. Just to give you an idea what's possible inside of Houdini and what's possible with procedural setups. So what we'd have to do now is export that geometry um, and render it or even render it inside Houdini. And the way you would export geometry um, in the non-commercial, in the apprentice version of Houdini is you can only export a single geometry file, so no geometry sequences. But for most experiments we do, this is enough. So the way you would do it is um, right click on a node you wanna export and say save geometry and then just give it a name. And it automatically um, checks which file you want to export it to. So I usually do an, ob an OBJ or an Alembic. So if you put OBJ on it or .abc for Alembic, you can export it. So I hope this whets your appetite for more Houdini stuff. And I hope you stick around with us and um, accompany us on this route down the procedural highway. So um, cheers and see you soon.